Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome to Doki Doki Literature Club. Doki Doki Literature Club is an amazing visual novel about you being in a literature club with a bunch of girls with the Doki Dokis. Ignore those warnings about graphic imagery, this is a pure heart anime girl VN. Hey! Who? I see an annoying girl running toward me from a distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor, and a good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. The one that never wins the main guy. We call her the friend zone route. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. Though if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. How, how? Wrong anime girl. I overslept again. But I caught you this time. Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Uh, you said like you were thinking about ignoring me. That's mean, Manly. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. I give them the wrong implications, like I'm actually gonna choose you for the ending. Man, there's a big space between your eyes. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean even if you want to. <laughs> oh no, just give me a little bit of time. We're going bully route. Whatever you say, Sayori. Eh <laughs> heh. We cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Manly, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm not really interested in joining any clubs, especially ones you're in. I haven't been looking, either. Uh, that's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm joining the anti-social club. I'm sure it's possible that I did, in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. So he already likes to worry a little too much about me. When I'm perfectly content just being getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. I'll have skills. At being a loser. What your happiness is really important to me, you know. And I know you're happy now. But I die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. It jokes on you, I'm already a neat. I don't study class, I just show up the free lunch. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. Alright, alright. I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit, even if she does exaggerate everything instead of her inside of her head. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello? Sayori. Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. Good. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out. So I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wake up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know, Doki Doki. No, what? Your face is turning red. Do you have a cold? 
Well, then you could come to my club. Sayori. Yeah? There's no way I'm going to go to your club. Mmm, Mimi. Sayori is the vice president of the literature club. You know, the title drop. Not that I was ever aware that you had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed a club, she inherited the title of Vice President. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a terrible idea. Come on, please. Why do you care so much anyway? Oh god, the anime club. Joe and Sos. Well... I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead, or if she's so cutting as to have planned all of this out. I let out a long sigh. Fine, I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes, let's go! And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. Oh no. I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, but being generally used for third year classes and activities. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, a new member is here. I told you, don't call me a new member. Eh? I glance around the room. Welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Sayori always says nice things about you. Okay, I see your archetypes stacking up here. Seriously? You brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, Manly. What a nice surprise. Welcome to the club. All words escape me in this situation. The cool one. The nice one on the far left. And... The annoying one. More annoying than the ever one, but in a different way. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. Grills. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. Uh, okay. So sorry. Don't do that, Manly. Natsuki. Hmm. Huh. Jimmy Cricket, she's already blushing after saying mean things. The girl of the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She's gonna be self-conscious about her height or something. She's also the one who made the cupcakes according to Sayori and has a heart of gold. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori, Sayori says that quietly into my ear, then turns back toward the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. Uh, don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Uh, well, it's nice to meet both of you. That's right. It's great to see you again, Manly. Monica smells sweetly, so skirt magically flips up somewhat, but not enough. We do know each other. Well, we really talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically completely out of my league. So, having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... Y you too. Thanks. Come sit down, Manly. I mean, roof through the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little too excited. Then how about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. We got plenty of desks to go around in here. As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so that there's one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room, where Natsuki grabs a wrap wrapped tray and Yuri opens a closet. Kanye West spills out. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. 
Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Whoa! Now take your lips to foil off the trader field a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing, and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. Kawaii! I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. <laughs> well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Sayori grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious. Oishi des. Sayori talks with her mouth full and was already about to get the icing on her face. I turn the cupcake around my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite like she's going to Sundari? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. <laughs> That's so <laughs> but why? Why are you faking, faking me? <laughs> it's not like I haven't I heard this somewhere before. Made them for you or anything? I got a big grin on my face. Uh, I thought you technically did. Sayori said. Well, maybe. Not for you, 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 you dummy. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. I give up Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before sitting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom. Of course they do. What else do you think they do? Literature? They sit down, drink tea, eat cupcakes, and look cute. Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Um, I guess. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Uh, that, that, that's not... Insulted Yuri looks away. I meant that you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. No, I can't, apparently. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow and smiles at me. So, what made you consider the literature club? Um... I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... Apparently said that he's completely changed his accent. That's okay. Don't be embarrassed. Well, make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the literature club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? How could you... You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you the leader of the debate club last year? <laughs> well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. All the better for me. It must be hard to start a new club. You can put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But make school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah. We'll do our best. You know it. Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. 
Like each one's some kind of archetype I'm supposed to choose between, depending on my personal choices. Monica must have really worked hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they're also delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. Oh, I think I can. So, Manly, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh... Considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Um... Manga... Manga... Naruto... I murder quietly to myself, half-joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. I also like manga! Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. What coincidence, I find my comfort in the world of everything but people also. But you know, I like a, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Ah, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasped it and relate to it at a minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you. I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. So real horror, wink wink, is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world. If only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Someone's like I get along in this visual novel. Oh, why's that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes start over to me for a split second. And never mind. Do you like romance, manga? Especially ones where some new guy like joins the literature club and falls in love with the Sundari? That's right. You usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap here behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called... Don't say it out loud! And get that back! Fine, fine. Your cupcakes, your poems... Everything you do is just as cute as you are. Bully the Natsuki. Sayori slides up behind Natsuki and puts her hand on her shoulders. I'm not cute! She says as her eyes squint in in some kind of emoji phase. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you show them sometime? Damn, I'm smooth. N no Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Uh, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Showing in level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. Well, everyone's just a pile of embarrassment in this club. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Uh, I want to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay. I have an idea, everyone. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. The next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way everyone is even. Um... Yeah! Let's do it. 
Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it'll help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Manly? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on. There's still one problem. Uh, uh, what's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I've bluntly come forth for what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. You're gonna join the club, you know, don't bother. Sayori may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I may need a little money under the table here. I still have other clubs to look at, and, um... I lose my train of thought. as four anime girls stare me down with quizzical looks. Damn, that's painful. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But... I'm sorry, I thought... Hmm. Manly. You, you all... I, I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price you need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up, in unison. Yes, I'm so happy! Sayori wraps her arm around me, jumping up and down. I'm not going down there not at all. Hey! You really did scare me for a moment. I might be going down there around. If you really just came for cupcakes, I would be super pissed. I may also be going down your route. And that makes it official. I may or may not go your, down your route, but at least you're not Sayori. Welcome to the Literature Club. Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over to me once more. Manly, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. Um, I play video games and I talk over them. That's my form of poetry. I'll just I'll just link you to my YouTube channel tomorrow at class on my phone. Yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my medical writing skills? Man, I just completely messed up that sentence. I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey Manly, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? Not really. That's right, Sayori and I never walk home together anymore, because she always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. No, Manly! Yay! With that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori. Natsuki, Yuri, and of course Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in the literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright. I'll just need to make most of my circumstances and I'm sure good fortune will find me. My daily life of a high school boy now begins. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. It's time to write a poem. Pick the words you think your favorite club member will like. Something good might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. Oh boy. There. We're gonna make a save point. We're gonna do the save scums. Interesting enough, Monica's not here. It really gets noggin joggin. What's those brain cells going? Let's see. Journey, electricity, quiet. <laughs> Skipping Troll, Covet, Tenacious, Romance, and Crimson. Uh, you know, this is actually harder than I thought. Oh no. Well, I'm kind of feeling one of these two routes down here. If Monica's not a route, then. Uh, hmm. I'm just going to pick something and see, like, where, where the, where the, you know, the tile falls. Um, romance. Seems simple enough. Romance. Explode. <laughs> um, okay. Embrace. Alone. Depression. Shopping. Headphones. Joy. Wonderful. Sweet. Puppy. 
put Puppy in there. Because she jumped up when I hit Puppy. Interesting. She really liked Puppy. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, Suicide. That's a nice one. Uh, Giggle. She liked that one. Essence, Raindrops, Meager, Laugh, and Warm and Fluffy. Well, I'm pretty good at this. Determination. Happiness. Hop. She likes happiness. Kitty. Marshmallows. Well, I guess I'm going down your route. Parfait. Vanilla? Uh, climax. Spinning dream. Vanilla. Boy, you're, you're easy to read. Amazing. You know, I have not triggered Yuri's at all. Is she is she like the ones that are a little more depressive? Swimsuit. Family. Yeah, I'm not tricking her at all. Yeah, she likes the gloomy ones. Lollipop. Scars. Whoa, she wants scars. Dark. She want dark too? What? Contamination? Would you want contamination? So the real dark ones are the ones she likes. The other ones just kind of likes anything in between. Heartbeat. I feel like that was a good poem. That was a good poem. It made no sense. Hi again, Manly. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. That'd be terrible. Nah, don't worry. I'm here for the next hour or so. It might be a little strange for me, but at least I'd like to keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Manly. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Make you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on. Like, he deserves any slack. So you already told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. I knew it! <laughs> Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and Manga. Manga's literature, excuse me. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Menly always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with a busy work even without me without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room? Do I? How dependable. Sayori, that's because your room is so messy it's distracting. It's true, Sayori. Clean that stuff up. And you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you two really are good friends, aren't you? You might I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Manly can become good friends, too. Or more. Um... Sayori. Hmm? As usual, Sayori seemed oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, uh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know. Wait, Sayori, now I'm a little guilty to make a poem for you. M me? What have we do? Go down all their routes. Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? Never mind. Sayori may sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what do I do? Uh, I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess it means up to me to rescue this situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. Well, that's real nice to say. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah. I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright. Well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out. So I picked out the book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention if you don't usually read. And we could, you know... Discuss it, if you want. That's all. Th this is... 
how is this girl accidentally being so cute? Accidentally. She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Uh, Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically would take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But this doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Man. Looks like no one wants to be bombed today. I slumped down into the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me. But I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. That's the neat way. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. We're probably gonna seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, so. Especially the workout club. Or body improvement, rather. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know. We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Just so that all we do is just drink tea and look cute. They'll sign up like crazy. Something that speaks to their creative minds. Hmm. That doesn't solve the problem, though. Uh, what do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Sayori's talk taking this really seriously. For a minute there, I thought she was awful girl. Apparently not. It's weird to hear her deliberating like this. Huh, that's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? What kind? Well, I guess we could... Cupcakes! Listen, just get me out there and get my shirt off. I'm all the buffet they need. I went there. <laughs> Good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. You're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it? Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. Cupcakes it is, and I'm hungry. You anime girls, you're always hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Sayori can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it'd be really like to see the world through her eyes. Whoa! I open my eyes to find Sayori's face filling my vision. It's low resolution and kind of blurry. Like she's being upscaled at this very moment. I nearly fall out of my chair. <laughs> sorry. Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't a napping club. Oh, I... I uh, disagree. Does our school have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know. You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica's overhead, overheard. It's true, though. Yeah. I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. <laughs> it's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? And... N not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up this on time? That's... It's a secret. You can't always use that excuse. I knew it. Come on. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, 
It's written all over you. Eh? Right here, on your hand. I wrote it down near earlier. Sayori glanced around at herself. How is it written all over me? You were clearly in a rush this morning. Actually, no, let me rephrase that. You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all around here. Ah. I run my fingertips down the side of Sayori's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. It looks pretty simple to me. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's toothpaste stain on your collar right here. I try to wipe off the steam with my finger. Uh, but nobody would ever notice that. I did. Of course they would. Nobody's gonna tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. Hey, you meanie. And you don't even keep your blazer button up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Huh? Eh? That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to bun her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Oh god, am I on the Sayori route unintentionally? Oh no! This is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kind of things. Eh? Just don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. Ibaka. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? No. No. Hey, be careful. The bun might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close a bun near her chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? Hehehe. <laughs> it did when I bought it. Ugh. If you ever bought it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my opai got bigger again. Don't say that loud. Anyway, you look much better now, so... Ah. Why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer button up like that? But so stuffy. Ooh, well, it's not worth it at all. Sayori hastily unbuns her blazer once more. Phew. That's so much better. Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbun, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? Why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because... If I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. She basically means she has a crush on you. But we're gonna ignore that. And you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. So that's why I'm keeping on bun. Just so you know, that no boyfriend thing also applies to me. See you later. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Eh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on getting to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. <laughs> I guess we really are better taking care of each other than we are take taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so, huh? So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. Wake me up inside. You're doing it again, Sayori. But I was choking that time. No, you weren't. I know it, Sayori. Stop it. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Eh? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Manly, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I feel to sound enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? I just threw together a bunch of words and saw what happened. You know, just like modern poetry. Yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait. Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in the composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. Those are nice bags. I do the same myself. Whom should I show my poem to first? Oh! 
So the points in the poem. So that means you, you have a choice of who to show it with. So you design the poem around them and then you show it to them. I'm wondering if you can make like a meta poem where it's like perfectly balanced and just show it all and all like, yeah, this is really good. Ugh. You're not together an exasperated side from within the closet. He seems to be annoyed by something. I approach her in case she needs a hand. Ah, so the poem part does actually influence what CG you get here. So I was going to say, oh, rat. Oh no. You're looking for something in there. Thank you, Monica. She never puts my stuff back in the right spot. What's the point of keeping your collection organized if someone else is just going to mess it up? Now it's like he slides a bunch of stack books and boxes, boxes across the shelf. Manga. You read manga, right? Ah. Sometimes. Manga is one of those things where you can't admit you're really into it until you figure out where the other person stands. Uh, how did you know anyway? Because I said so. I heard you bring it up at some point. Besides, it's kind of written on your face. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, I see. There's a lone volume of manga amidst a stack of various books on the side of one of the shelves. Curious, I pull it out of the stack. There it is. Natsuki snatches out my hand. She then turns to the box of manga and slips the volume right into the middle of the rest. Ah, much better. Seeing a box with one book missing is probably the most irritating sight in the world. I know that feel. I get a closer look at the box set she's admiring. Parfait Girls? Is that, is that newest pretty cure? It's a series I've never heard of in my life. That probably means it's either way out of my demographic or it's simply terrible. Only I have the best taste. If you're gonna judge, you can do, go do it from the glass in that door. She points to the classroom door. Hey, I wasn't judging or anything. Your taste is terrible. I didn't even say anything. Read some good stuff like Sword Art Online. That's a joke, by the way, for anyone who doesn't get sarcasm. I know you're out there. There was a tone of her voice. But I'll tell you one thing, Manly. Consider this a lesson straight from the Literature Club. Don't judge a book by its cover. In fact, Natsuki pulls out the first volume of Parfait Girls from the box. I'm going to show you exactly why. She shoves a book right into my hands. Ah. I stare at the cover. It features four girls in colorful attire striking animated feminine poses. It's exceedingly... Moe. Don't just stand there. Ooh, uh... Natsuki grabs my arm and pulls me out of the closet. Damn. She then takes a seat against the wall beneath the window cells. She pats on the ground next to her, signaling me to sit there. Wouldn't chairs be more comfortable? I take my seat. Chairs wouldn't work. We can't read at the same time like that. And what's that? Ugh, I guess it's easier to be close together like this. Yeah, that's right. How are you gonna handle that? You didn't nerk Slendere. Don't just say that. You make me feel weird about it. Natsuki crosses her arms and sco scooches an inch away from me. Sorry. I didn't exactly expect to be seeing this close to her either. Not like I say it's particularly a bad thing. I open the book. It's only a few seconds before Natsuki wants to get inches closer, reclaiming the additional space while she hopes I won't notice. I can feel her peering over my shoulder, much more eager to begin reading than I am. Wow, how long has it been since I've read the beginning? Hmm? You don't go back and flip the older volumes every now and then? I actually do do that. Not really. Maybe sometimes after I've already finished a series. You damn speed reader. Hey, are you paying attention? Uh, I am, but nothing's really happened yet. So I can talk at the same time. It looks like it's a bunch of friends in high school. Typical slice of life's affair. I kind of grew out of these since it's rare for the writing to be entertaining enough to make up for the lack of plot. Look at that little meta commentary about this VN. So... What should I expect from this? Is there going to be a plot? Well, obviously. You think I would enjoy something that didn't have a plot? Damn, she's talking about this VN. Holy crow. I mean... Well, I guess I know what you're saying. A lot of the beginning is about simple things. Like there's a really funny chapter where they're obsessed with a guy at the ice cream shop. But that just helps you get to know the characters. And besides, it's still entertaining. But later on, there's all kinds of drama. Like when they get into all their backstories and all when some of the romance starts to happen. That's really what makes it so good. There's so many touching parts. 
Ah, is that so? It sounds like you really know what you're talking about. Maybe I underestimated you. <laughs> hey, wait. What's that supposed to mean? I thought you were just a dirty casual. Ooh, uh... That's like he gives me a little shove. I just meant that I haven't seen you yet at your full power. You've been suppressing your power levels, haven't you? You shouldn't do that. It's good to go all out in the first match. <sighs> good save. Ah, this chapter seems like it's about baking. This is just a guess, but is there a lot of baking in this manga? It's like the heavens feel around. Well... Natsuki pauses for a moment as if she doesn't want to admit something. Yeah. What does that matter? It doesn't. Uh, I was just curious. Since you enjoy baking too, right? That's... Just a coincidence. I just happened to get into baking around the same time I got this manga. Yeah, sure. You anime girl. Like I would never get anything because it's in manga. I feel bad for anyone that impressionable. Ah ha 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 ha. Definitely not a coincidence. I guess it explains Natsuki's interest in baking. Still, all the hummus pick up from a manga. Yeah, that's definitely one of the better ones. But then you wearing an eye patch and claiming your powers. Not to mention she's really good at it, so who am I to judge? Look at those glass bowl eyes. Read on for a few more minutes. I finished a couple of chapters at this point. Are you sure this isn't boring for you? It's not. Even though you're just watching me read? Well, I'm, f I'm fine with that. If you say so. I guess it's fun sharing something with you like with someone else. I always get excited when I convince any of my friends to pick up a series I enjoy. You know what I mean? Hmm? You don't? Well, you have less friends than me. Um... That's not... Well, I wouldn't really know. What do you mean? Don't you share your manga with your friends? Could you not rub it in? Jeez. Ah, sorry. Mm. Like, I can never get my friends to read this. They just make mangas for kids. I can't be bringing up with them being all like... Eh, you still haven't grown out of that yet. Makes me want to punch him in the face. Do it. Ugh, I know those kinds of people. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge. Much less friends who are also into it. But then you get people like me, who are also into it, but are gonna judge you. A casual. I'm already kind of a loser. So I guess I gravitated toward the other losers over time. I'm a loser, baby. So why don't ya? But it's probably harder for someone like you. Huh. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Wait, which part? I mean, I feel like I can't even keep it up- keep it in my own room. I don't even know what my dad would do if he found this. At least it's safer in the club room. Except Monica was kind of a jerk about it. I just can't win, can I? Well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am, reading it. Well, it's not like that solves any of my problems. Maybe. But at least you're enjoying yourself, right? So? <laughs> Jeez, that's enough. Are you gonna keep reading or what? Yeah, yeah. You cliche. I flip the page. Suddenly Natsuki starts laughing. Oh, 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 oh. I totally forgot that happens. Natsuki puts her finger on one of the panels. Minori is my favorite character. You always feel a little bad for her since she's so unlucky. Bully Minori. But it gets especially bad when... Uh... I shouldn't be talking about that yet. Just finish this chapter. Natsuki's voice sparkles with excitement. It's a stark contrast to her usual bossy tone. But if she's not used to sharing her favorite manga with her friends, I can understand why. It's hard to express in words the feeling you get when connecting with someone like that. I'd be able to provide that to Natsuki for whom it's a rare experience. The thought makes me smile a little to myself. Okay, everyone. Eh? Yeah. We all ready with today's poems? Oh, come on. Could your timing be any worse? We're about to make character development. Sorry. It's a little mysterious, Monica. Are you trying to, like, get in the way here? I just need to make sure we have enough time. You do look pretty cozy over there. Eh? Huh? Natsuki suddenly notices how close she's gone to me. She hastily slides herself a good 12 inches away from me. Alright. 
Guess I'll stop here for now. I close the book and hand it towards Natsuki. You're just giving him back? But you want to know what happens? Uh, yeah, but... This is casual manga. Monica just said... Don't be dumb. Just take it home with you. Eh? Is that really alright? I say that mostly because I really didn't plan on using my spare time to read this. Well, of course. It would take forever to finish if you didn't take it home. Just finish that one before tomorrow so we can start the next one. And if it gets bent, I'll kill you. Is that going to be the literal? By tomorrow? I only got part way for the volume so far. I might fall behind on some shows if I try to get through this. But I suppose that's a necessary sacrifice in exchange for seeing Natsuki's enthusiastic face. Or even more scared what will happen if I don't finish it. Alright then. I stand up. I return to wrap up my stuff and carefully slip the book into my bag. And I think we're back... Yeah, we're back here. Huh. You know, I'm just noticing something here. Hold on, let's try it. So while safe scumming, I think there's something a little quirky about the choices they like and their personalities. Because she likes agonizing. You'll see in a second. Misfortune. She likes misfortune. For example, Papa, Mimo. Uh, Grievart's probably gonna be you. Valuable, unif empty. She likes empty. Let's try... Cry? She likes cry. Not that cry. Um... Emails middle. Grief. Unstable. She likes unstable, okay. Let's try... Death, joy, heaven sent. She likes death. So, you think... She seems like she likes a lot of neutral options. But she has a few dark ones in there, and I feel like that's... A little bit of a it's noggin jogging. Like likes dark, see. Oh, she also likes scars. Hmm. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a bit a little bit more. At the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book that she lent to me. When that, she seems to be in the first few pages. Ah, crap. I think she knows me looking at her. She sneaks never glance at me and her eyes meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry. I was just spacing out. I marred this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh. It's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book that you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you have the two copies of the same book? Uh... Well, when I saw for the bookstore yesterday... Uh, that's not what I meant. I mean... I just happened to buy two of them. Shifty eyes. Ah, I see. It's not like you're trying to buy an extra for me or anything. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear it. Once it starts to pick up, you might have had a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about, anyway? Well... Hmm... Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous-looking eye symbol on the front cover. Alright. I just want to make sure I don't actually give you anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school, who moves in with her long-lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. Life sure is strange. Trademark. She gets targeted by these people who escape from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... That's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story. It's that dark turn came from nowhere. Wow, every single one of these... They're dropping like foreshadows. <laughs> every girl's, like, route is dropping foreshadows. Well, that's heavy. Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Manly? I'm looking between the lines here. I see the, the code falling in front of me. No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kind of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. 
Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that those kinds of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals or their own philosophy that they believe in. Then suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist, there may not be the naive one fiddling their one-side morals into a few of the villain's plans. I'm... I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. It's the nature of your trope. I haven't lost interest or anything. I mean, I'm still here recording. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club after all. Uh... That's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? You don't have to. <laughs> what are you saying? Just a moment ago you said you were looking forward to it. Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I put into the bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive, like you're some kind of shy anime girl. You're not a shy anime girl, are you? That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. Damn, I'm getting the dokis here. That is reading in comp company of someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Alright. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in one company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri's in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own, own book. I glance over. Are you stalking me? It looks like she's reading from my book instead. S sorry I was just... Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I, I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's, then hold my book more between the two of them. Uh... I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Uh, I guess it makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Ah uh, yes, the CG. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and her forefinger. Uh, I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. Man, this is too lewd. Double reading. They're almost touching hands. They're holding them like this. They're held even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face when she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Eh? Yeah? To turn the page. Oh yeah, 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 I'm oh, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, uh, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do. Since you've been so patient with me. Y yeah Thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. Ooh, boy. Things are burning up in here. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a bit silly thought, but... The main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways. But she also second guesses all the things she says, and then she reloads a save. And does. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I see into your head or anything. But they're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. I see. You remain silent for a moment. But, Manly, that's probably... 
a terrible thing to have in common with her. Uh, that's so embarrassing that you think that. W wait I didn't mean in a bad way or anything. You really like touching your hair. Sorry, I really don't know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. I guess it more meant that it's kind of... Kawaii. Moi, moi, this. Ah. Uh, what are you saying all of a sudden? I... Okay, everyone. Yeah, you always need to interrupt at the right time, Monica. I think it's about time we share today some poems with each other. We might not have enough time if we wait too long. Ah. Uh, Yuri exhales, spared from finishing your thought. Is that alright, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Uh, it's not... It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. Ow! Alright. I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I only read it with you? Um... I guess I don't have much, too much of a preference either way. Hmm... In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first three chapters in your own time. Alright. I stand up. I make a mellow note where I left off in the books and slip it back into my bag. And that's the cut. So I've done a little save skimming. I went down the Emma Girls routes, trying them out. Um, so we're gonna probably fall off from the Natsuki route. So, let's see if she responds to changes here. Okay, it's a little different, yeah. Okay, well, let's start with the things I don't like. First of all, um... Natsuki rereads my poem. Uh, never mind. I don't feel like giving you my opinion. And then what's the point of sharing in the first place? I wrote this when I could have been doing other things. Like anime, video games. Or let's playing. Uh-huh. In fact, remember how I said I wanted to read your poems? That's what I had in mind when writing this. I want to help you feel comfortable enough to share yours. Like Monica said. Uh, well, I'd be more comfortable sharing my poem if yours was really bad. You're supposed to show me some dumb poem and make me go, Ha, well that's what you gave let me show you what real literature looks like. You went and ruined it. I hope you're happy. Yes, I am. So, in other words, you're saying you liked it. Uh. Natsuki's retort gets caught in her throat. Uh, you're so... You, you just... You, you don't understand anything, do you? I already told you that. You don't have to go announcing it to the world that, like you're all self-important. Pretty sure you never actually said that. I say that mostly to myself. Natsuki must really hate me or something. No, she's just madly in love with you. I can't figure out if it's a win or a loss that you like my poem. In any case, you still need to show me yours, right? Fine, I guess. Only because Monica will make me if I don't. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try. But that's about it. Eh. Yeah. I told you that you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because... Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. It might... Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like, except for a rhyme at the end, but they may have fallen flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. That people are prophetic. You should go hang out with Yuri more often. So you did. I guess more went to that than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take away that away from her. That's what Monica says. Curiosity. Hi, Manly. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, 
If you have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Now, there was no options. I went back, and I, I did different mixes of the poem. And there was no options to get you any affection points of that. Um, unless there's a very secret underlayer to that, and... I had to choose one of the girls, and then when I show you the poem, it changes. I'm not sure. Don't worry, Manly. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I had Monica on my poem. Mm-hmm. I like it, Manly. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. <laughs> oh, jeez. No, no. It kind of makes me think of something Natsuki would write. You calling me out? And she's a good writer, too. So take that as a compliment. <sighs> if you say so. Yep. But any chance have you read anything by Shel Silverstein? I, I have, actually. Eh? Maybe a long time ago. He's famous for telling all kinds of stories in just a few simple words. His poems can be funny, endearing, or even sad. And sometimes they're only a few lines long. They might even feel like they're written for kids, but if you think about them, they can express views of the world that would apply to anybody. I don't really think Natsuki was on par of Shil Silverstein. I see. So you're saying that Natsuki's kind of like that? No. Sort of. Maybe she's not an expert. But you probably won't find much filler in her poems. They might be easy to write, but they're super challenging to get the meaning through. So I can see why it'd be your kind of poem to explore. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased toward their own kinds of styles, but I always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims not to be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. It's just kind of depressive. Hole in the wall. It could have been me. See the direction the sparkle protrudes. A noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend, I'll never know I wasn't home. I appear inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel blind like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late, my retinas. Already scorched, scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole, and it wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Switching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he on the other side was looking in. Hmm. Huh. A hole of infinite choices. I wasn't looking in, I was looking out, and he never said I was looking in. Interesting poem. So, what do you think? Uh, it's very freeform, that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh... Well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that, because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone's bare friends with each other. Anyway, you must unlock my route later. There's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on paper and tie it up later. And every way of thinking about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. So what I'm going to do is, rather than showing their generic 
options. I'm just going to show like their ideal re responses. So this is Sayori's route. I'm definitely most comfortable sharing with Sayori first. She's my good friend after all. Oh my goodness. This is so good, Manly. Eh? I love it. I think you like love everything about me. I had no idea you were such a good writer. Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a manly poem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs a sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> I'm really happy just that you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now. Not to mention the fact I'm staying in front of you in the club room. Er, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Manly. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people. That's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. And I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That would be my way of faking you. Alright, I'm gonna hold you to that then. Yay! Now you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, The way you glow from my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you miss me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Or are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky's blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But not mad. I want breakfast. This just sounds like a morning. Sayori. This is just a guess, but... Did you wait until this morning to write this? No! I, just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still try my best. Oh, uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that was a bad poem. It came out nice, or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school. It doesn't take long to make eggs and toast. It's bad to skip breakfast. Did you like run into the school with toast in your mouth? I get all cranky. I can't imagine you cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. This was so much fun. Monica's the best. Oh, uh, yeah. But next time I won't forget. Then I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. Yuri seems the most experienced, so I should start with her. I can trust her opinion to be fair. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. And what was that? Did I say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth and ends up covering her whole face. I... Uh, he's going to hate me. Um... You really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Eh? That's... Uh, I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? <sighs> Yuri takes a breath. So... What kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Wow, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time. Really. Huh? Yuri stares at me blankly and looks at my poem again. Well, I know that. I just meant... Um, Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her finger along the words in the poem as if breaking it down more fluently. Yeah. Okay. 
This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of wouldn't pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter and they form it to fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Siri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into write, even writing a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice. You're learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Not to give you a little bit biased, though. Biased? How? Um... Well... Never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri's apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'll have to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily, as if, there are rare, if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't it supposed to be a literature club? Ghost under the light. And tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining streetlight that withstood the test of time. The last is to be replaced by sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe. Calm, breathing air of the present, living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. I'm... Um, I'm sorry to have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. It took you a long time to read. Uh, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short? I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since our first time sharing, I want to write something a little more mild. To be easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Manly. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you only did glance over it, after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I ain't even fond of that. That's impressive. Eh? It's nothing, really. Yours was impressive too, so... Nah. If anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course. Ah. Uh, you know... I was really nervous about doing all this. But the end, I enjoyed it. I'm going to do my best for you, Manly. Ah. Uh, uh, me too. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. It was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I sigh. Hooey! I guess that's what I end up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I want to keep their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki, Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? You completely miss a symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I, I, I know that. I just meant... the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? Uh. 
You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks. They didn't really come out nice at all. Um... Well, I do have a couple of suggestions. Needs more murder. Huh. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it. And Manly did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some of my suggestions of my own. First of all... Excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a lot of time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon. Unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring. Like me. And my face. Which I haven't yet. She's lying. She means my face. <sighs> and mainly like my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Huh? That's not what I... Uh, y y you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Yes, fight over me. Dance, my puppets. Maybe you're just jealous that Manly appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. Huh? How do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... Girls, girls, there's plenty of Manly to go around. With the magic of saves and reloading. No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Here we go. Here comes the jam. Let's go. Come on. Let's see some blood. Let's do this. Come on. Um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one who, whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Manly starts showing up. That's an amazing ability. Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you! I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly both girls turned towards me as if they just noticed as I was standing there. Manly! She, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. But she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective. Then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point of making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to, to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Manly. Are you guys gonna make me choose? Wait. There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, but it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Manly? Um... Well? How'd I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. Top 10 harem pro tag situations. But whoever I agree with, they'll probably think of more highly than me. So of course that's going to be... Dang, I don't want to say Ori route. Dang, dang. Is there any way we can just end this on neutral terms? Yeah, dirty neutrals we are. Uh, I feel like if I choose Sayori, Sayori's obviously gonna like me more. Sorry, Sayori. Um... Yuri! You're really talented. Eh, well... But Natsuki has a point. I think that... I rack my brain and attempt to back myself up. I think that conveying feelings with words... With a few words, rather, can be just as impressive as well. It lets the reader's imagination take over. And Natsuki's poem did a really good job of that. Yeah. It did, didn't it? Ha ha ha! So how much you know. That's not... Natsuki. I think that's enough. Huh? Me? But you were so mean to me. Natsuki's voice whines. Look. What we talked about yesterday was right. Writing is a really personal thing. And sharing can be definitely be hard. It looks like we learned that today. Even small criticisms, criticism can lead to something pretty heated. I glance over my shoulder. Sayori is nodding vigorously. Yeah, so... You don't need to feel friended. You're a great writer, Natsuki. There's plenty of manly to go around anyway. Natsuki's voice gets caught in surprise. Thanks for noticing. She finally mutters that, barely audible. Yuri. 
Yuri looks at me dejectedly. With a face like that, I can't help but feel bad for her as well. I'm sure that Natsuki didn't mean everything she said. She don't need to feel friend either. Well, if you say so. Hey, it's not like you need to apologize for me, Manly. Sheesh. I think I do with the way you act. Natsuki takes a breath. I... The thing about... <laughs> Natsuki glances around the room. Would everyone stop staring at me? There's only like a few pla people we can stare at, I mean... Unsurprisingly, Natsuki has a hard time with it than she boasted. Sayori and Monica look away. Hmm. Huh. Anyway... The thing about your boobs, I didn't mean it, okay? She totally meant it. That's all. Natsuki looks away, avoiding eye contact with anyone. Yeah, you're naturally beautiful, Yuri. Sayori. I'll go make some tea. Huh? I was just trying to help. I'm sure she appreciated Sayori. I put I pat Sayori on the shoulder. Well, now that we're past that, everyone's read each other's poems, right? I hope that was worthwhile for everyone. Especially you, Manly. And to be honest, it's a nice change of pace from the lazing around we get we got a little too used to. Ah, so Jemai joining the club was responsible for ruining the atmosphere. Damn. No, not at all. Not at all. There's still time before we go home. We get school days up in here. So I'll relax for a bit. Of course, besides chatting, we do literature-related things in the club room. So maybe you can take the chance to pick up a book or do some writing. After all, that's what the club is for. I disagree, Monica. Eh, uh, about what? That's not the most important thing with the literature club. The most important thing is snacks. Is having fun. Oh, yeah, I guess that too. <laughs> of course. Well, I guess that's why you're vice president, Sayori. <laughs> In the end, though, Monica's right. Being in the literature club probably means I can't spend all my time doing nothing. Damn. But in the end, I guess it's been worth it so far. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was alright. Mostly. I only just cared about Manly. Don't tell him I said that. I heard that. Manly, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learn something from your friends, too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little more about the kind of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Manly, ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. Do bad, it'll be for nothing. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori. About what happened earlier. Eh, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen a fight like that. It's because you introduced me into the mix. Getting up in the mix. I promise they're both wonderful people. <laughs> you don't you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, and that's all. I can see why they make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Manly, it's nice that they get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you, too. That's... Every day is going to be so much fun. <sighs> Looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. I'm only here for the anime girls, but she doesn't realize that. The worst thing is she doesn't realize I'm here for all of them but her. Shame. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but... Does it really need to stop there? We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but due to you, Sayori, is an internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this.